There's little risk of getting stuck, and it's typically welcoming to amateur spelunkers. Josh and his friends found this encouraging, however weren't afraid of taking a little risk to reach less explored sectors of the cave. I've finally seen some sort of I'm sorry chat, I'm never really ever getting in a cave bro. A cave that has like a tourist kind of thing, tour guide, all that, people can get to me, for sure. An unsolicited cave where it's just me and the homies, and like, I, it's no, it's no front to back type shit. It's no straight through and through. You gotta navigate. I'm good. I'm good. All right, we got us a new contender in town. Let's see if this does good on the channel. If so, we'll keep it on the main. If not, it's going on a second because I kind of want to really check these out. It says YouTubers who accidentally found terrible things. This is Pixels After Dark. Let's check it out. Let's see if it's good or not. Connor Kelly and his family were exploring the McCoy Mine in Nevada. An abandoned mine shaft in the desert, with a portion of the entrance still accessible, the group begins to travel through the- huh, that's a, 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 a different type of voice, but I, I, I you know, we, we gonna immerse, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have like the horror voice that I look for, but I'm not too much, you know what I'm saying? Why is a little child going into the mouth? Uh, a mine shaft? They parents allow it. What can we do to stop it? You know what I mean? Depths of the mine and begin their exploration. The cavern was very large, with a few artifacts still present from when it was functional years ago. The group stays quiet as they don't want to risk the sound dislodging any rocks from the ceiling. However, it's not long before they approach something that demands discussion. Oh, is that a rope? Notice something reflecting back at me. Oh, I do see that. So, do you see that reflection? You're trying to check it out. Check it out. Oh no. Nah. See, see, listen, listen. I don't know. See me, I'm the type. Hold on, let me get some seeds. A kid telling you to check it out probably nine times out of ten means don't check it out. You know what I'm saying? That's something that shouldn't be checked out, and it looks like they're trying to check it. Oh, Realize what they are. The group finds a large pile of children's sized shoes and bones. And bones? Hold and sh first of all, it didn't really click to me all the shoes until you. Think about what could have happened to cause all those shoes to be down there. Because not all those all those kids are going to go down there willingly. That's probably somebody's revisiting ground type, sh type, type shit, you know what I mean? The group suddenly gets justifiably cautious and stands and back as they're unsure what to do from here. One member of the group even pulls a gun, fearing for nearby predators deeper in the cave, or quite possibly even another human. After a brief discussion and inspecting the pile of shoes a little closer, the group advances a little bit further, where a dead end is found and the floor is scattered with more bones. Oh my god! Further invest. Oh my god! Did you see all those shit? That's somebody's dumping ground, dude! Investigation from viewers of the video mentioned that the bones don't appear to be human. It's more likely that these bones were a result of animal carcasses from predators such as mountain lions who might have feasted on their food within the cave. The children's shoes, however, make sense. are completely different. I do see the bones though. All right, I hope it's not, I hope it's not that. But what the, I can't explain those kids' shoes, bro. Story. There is no definite explanation for this, and I don't think there ever will be. However, the leading theory is that these were trophies collected from a serial killer. I would, bro, that's actually insane. Collecting items from victims isn't unheard of, with a very famous legend in Michigan claiming that a mysterious tree dangling children's shoes was also decorated by a serial killer. If you look at the shoes, they also appeared to be tethered differently. Some shoes look so worn like they've been there for decades, while others only a few years old. These Damn. shoes weren't dumped here all at once. It's a collection that had that, been built for some time. Yeah, oh my God. The family leaves and no conclusions have been met. Wow. A YouTuber by the name Dateline420 was hiking in the woods in the border of a park in Suffolk County, New York. 
Here he stumbled across what he believed to be the end of somebody's property, as there was a shed and a fire pit, as well as the sound of cars in the distance. Directly outside, where the property line meets the woods, were trees decorated with something harrowing. Anyway, I'll cut right to the chase because I might die. Look what these fucking are. What the fuck? Missing person photos. What the fuck? Not one, not two. Oh my god! Nah, that is actually insane. But dozens of posters detailing missing people were pinned on almost every tree in the surrounding area. One might wonder if maybe this was a setup for a video, however making this all more disturbing. These have been confirmed to be real missing people. Oh wow. Taking a closer look, these are missing person cases from all across the United States and throughout different years, mostly between 2009 and 2013. They also look very old and weathered, as if they've been hung up for quite some time. So these, you could tell, these aren't new. Like, not just that this is 2012, Noblesville, Indiana, right? Look at the fucking tape, look at the water damage. These shits have been hanging up for a, a while. Whether this be a serial killer's documentation of his murders, or some sick joke, it's still disturbing either way. It really is. The like, man that investigated- Even if like, that is just like a joke, to hang up real missing people posters like, like that, that's, that shit's not cool. You really gotta be some type of fucked up. You know these people are missing, their family misses them, they haven't been seen or heard from. And you're just, even if it's a sick joke, it's a sick fucking joke investigated the surrounding area and finds a few more unsettling things. The most odd being what appears to be a cage built with binded tree branches and a filled in hole sitting at the center. The man eventually hears voices and runs away. Oh my God. He reported the findings to the police and after a quick investigation, the house adjacent to the campsite claimed that they pinned the photos that they were preparing for an upcoming Halloween party. However, if that's the case, why do the posters look so old? Yeah, and what the fuck? That shit's been up there for fucking ever. And why are they real people? You could have made fake ones. You hanging up real people? Hell nah. Nah. Why was this the only thing set up at least a month before Halloween? With many people asking and Dateline 420 very curious, he revisited the site on Halloween to only find multiple new no trespassing signs and no indicator for any party or event. Wow. Wow. YouTuber Sam and Colby often make videos featuring themselves and a group of friends as they visit haunted locations. I say that somebody told me to react to them. This with no disrespect, as I think it makes for a more interesting story. However, their content is very suited to the seemingly staged side of YouTube horror. It seems like every abandoned place they go to has some paranormal occurrence, and it's hard to imagine that at least some of these aren't staged. Again, I want to reiterate, they are very entertaining, and they deserve their success for the production they put in. However, one night, they witnessed one of the most terrifying horrors they have on this channel, and they didn't even realize it. What? In a video titled Exploring Abandoned Insane Asylum, Girl Screams, Sam and Colby, as well as fellow YouTubers The Ireland Boys, visited an abandoned asylum hidden in a nearby forest. Typical to the format they have on many videos, they explored the abandoned building and swear someone was there with them. What? I literally think there is something downstairs. Whatever thing that you heard earlier. I think that's basically all there is there, though, to explore. It's just a bunch of rooms. Well, then let's go over here and figure out what's downstairs before it comes up and finds us. Okay. They act nervous and walk around cautiously. However, as they're exploring more, they hear police sirens coming from the distance. Thinking that they might be coming for them as visiting this place is technically trespassing, the group flees the building and stakes out in the nearby woods. There are people right in front of us that are not going. And they are looking right past us. It's only here that a series of odd occurrences commence that even the YouTubers aren't quite sure what to make of. They what? notice a few random people entering the building they just left and a helicopter with active searchlights flying overhead. The they fuck? run through the woods trying to make their escape when they suddenly hear a blood curdling scream. Oh. Guys, what the f you hear that? Yeah, get out of here! 
go. Guys, f run. Oh, wow. The woman continues to scream, and eventually the crew flees the woods to conclude their latest episode of exploring creepy abandoned buildings. Damn. After this night and the upload of the video, viewers would begin to get curious and investigate what might have happened that night. And a few weeks later, they would find out that yes, it was true. This was most definitely not a planned bit by Sam and Colby. What? If you take a look at this map, the YouTube group was in this forest in early September of 2017. Okay. It was right here on September 13th that the body of Lauren Wallen, a pregnant mother, was found dead in a shallow grave. I almost cried. Oh my God. Nah, that almost, like you ever get the chills so bad it almost make you cry. That's fucking insane. She had been missing for nine days. Although never confirmed, one can easily imagine where these screams came from on that tragic night in this forest. Damn. Guys, what the, f you hear that? Damn. Adventures with Purpose is a YouTube channel. Nah, that actually, damn, that's actually insane. That focuses on recovering artifacts from lakes and ponds. These are normally related to true crime cases, whether it be a car from a criminal or an article of clothing from missing people. The goal of the channel is to basically help out investigations as well as aiding the environment. That's why on May 26 of 2020, the group planned to participate in a mass environmental cleanup. In a survey of a lake in Portland, Oregon, they found evidence of multiple vehicles that have sunk to the bottom of the lake. Damn. On a day where the tide was low, the group built a map pinning general locations to all these vehicles and planned to dedicate the day to retrieving them and cleaning out the waters. They get in their wetsuits and begin navigating the lake, diving down and pinpointing each car detailed in their debriefing. They quickly find the first car and begin preparing for extraction. After attaching the car to a trailer on the land and positioning it to be pulled up a ramp, Adventures with Purpose went live to document a sweet moment in humanity. We're, we're dressed up. We are finally back in the water. Yes, we are. And, and before that, like, we can like elbow bump elbow because bump. anyway, we have a car that's coming out right now. We've this car today. We're gonna do this whole thing live. Like we've spent last uh, what four or five hours? Oh, yeah, four or five hours. Already getting this thing out because it was 10:30. 10:30 this morning. It was 80 feet deep, and so. We're now at the very end of this, and we've never done actual live Here showing somebody bring it to, for us to bring out of the, out of the uh, river. Many individuals were volunteering their time to clean the water, and just as the first car began to emerge from the lake, a chilling discovery would be found. There's a shoe in there. Whoa, 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 Call the cops, call the cops, call the cops. Damn. A decomposed body and bones were sitting in the front seat. Wow. After the police were called, investigation found that this body belonged to Timothy Robinson, a man who went missing on November 27th of 2008, 12 years before this discovery was made. Wow. The family was notified, I've never watched this channel before, not until we got the call from the detective a few days ago. Asked if we knew a Timothy Robinson. It's been 12 years since he became missing. This is my dad's brother. My dad's brother. My uncle. I want to personally thank you for bringing closure to this family. It's been a long time, and now he can finally be put to rest. Oh, my God. Hey, do you know 44% of y'all aren't subscribed? Go ahead and hit that button. And also go check out my gaming channel where I upload things like Spider-Man gameplay, Fortnite, Modern Warfare, older games, newer games, anything I can get my hands on, I'll play it. Go check it out. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the video, man. Exploring with Josh, a YouTuber who explores a variety of places, once found his crew and himself at the neck of a giant underground cave. This cave in Washington County is named the Ape Cave and stretches almost 2.5 miles long. Although deep, the cave is rather open with plenty of room for exploring and walking around. There's little risk of getting stuck, and it's typically welcoming to amateur spelunkers. Josh and his friends found this encouraging, however, weren't afraid of taking a little risk to reach less explored sectors of the cave. I finally seen some sort of. I'm sorry, chat. I'm never really ever getting in a cave, bro. A cave that has like a tourist kind of thing. 
tour guide, all that. People can get to me for show. An unsolicited cave where it's just me and the homies, and like, I, it's no, it's no front to back type shit. It's no straight through and through. You gotta navigate. I'm good. I'm good. Cause you don't got no service under that motherfucker. You don't got no. Uh, you, you, your your light died. That's it. Ah oh, hell no, nah, bro. Writing. I can't really make out what it says. But I think we're gonna be kneeling down now. I think we're gonna have to kneel down. Oh god. The majority of the 12 minute vlog just features the crew having fun. They begin to walk down a corridor that continuously gets smaller and smaller before each round Right, rider's... kneeling? I'm not, bro, if I have to do anything besides walking that motherfucker, I'm not doing it. Hell no. Stomachs inching through the narrow tunnel they found themselves in. They continue to question if they should continue, wondering if there's any more to explore as the tunnel gets rather tight. I don't even know if this leads out anywhere. I think it's just the end. We can be crawling all day. Let's find out. They even reach a point where they were about to turn back. However, Josh luckily noticed that the tunnel opened up. The crew squeezed through and successfully reached the end of the cave. What they didn't know was that somebody was waiting for them at the end. What? Okay. Um, got it. Can I head back now? This girl doesn't have a flashlight. Okay, I'm gonna have to take out my phone, actually. English? You speak English? No English. No? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, uh... Um, oh, wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> come with us. Hey, Josh. Do you see those, uh, the couple that was back there? Come on, come with us. Can you tell them their daughter's up here? She's scared? They, 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 they don't speak... She, she doesn't speak English. She doesn't speak English. English. It's okay. It's alright. Wow. This is the uh, way back. <laughs> What an experience. As we were about to leave, this little girl comes up out of nowhere, scares us. And at first we're like, wait, whose parents are hers? And she, there, she was just there alone by herself. Then she just stood there in the back. So I started talking to her, but she wouldn't answer me. And I was like, wait a minute. I don't think she speaks English. It turns out she really didn't speak English at all. She's by herself, crawled the whole way in there by herself. No light. No fucking no light. light. What the heck? I don't get it. No light. She didn't even speak English. Inside one of the deepest sectors of the ape cave wow. was a little girl. How the fuck do you lose your kid for that long? How do you let your kid run off in the nah? That's that's on parents for real. Put that nigga, put the little nigga on a leash, if you got to. Like, I would never, I would never, 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 never. Noticeably terrified and cautious, the group tried to console her. However, she was clearly fearing for her life, as she didn't want to approach the strangers in the isolated cave. Turns out that this girl was missing, ran into the ape cave, and crawled to the end of one of its deepest tunnels. The girl was stranded, alone Whose in the dark, is that? and looking at this angle of the only entrance to her location, I wonder if she would ever have been found, if not for this group. Damn. She was let out, and thankfully reunited with her family. Wow. Wow. Nah, that was a good video. That was a really good video. Nah, parents, oh god, they need to check them fucking parents, L parents, dude. Cause how the fuck do you let your child go on, like, without you in a fucking cave, dude? If there's one place you gotta keep, you always gotta keep an eye on your kid, especially if y'all outside doing, but in a cave, you let your kid free, like, lock in, lock in, lock the fuck in, man. <laughs>